Presentation of late night movies on Channel 3 is made possible in part by a grant from Nittany Oil Company, a subsidiary of Martin Oil Company, with locations in Alexandria, Bellwood, Lewistown, Phillipsburg, and State College. A family oriented business serving central Pennsylvania homeowners for over 25 years, also providing 24 hour emergency services. And made possible through the financial support of viewers like you. Some people hustle pool, some people hustle cars. But have you ever heard about the man who hustles stars? Jack Horkheimer, star hustler, director of the Miami Space Transit Planetarium. Our episode for this week, Monday, February 5th through Sunday, February 11th, is Napoleon, Lord Nelson, and Orion the Hunter. And now here to tell you all about tonight's sky and the biggest show of all, the universe, your star hustler, Jack Horkheimer. Greetings, greetings, fellow stargazers, and this week we've got three beautiful stars for your perusal and approval. And what's more, these three stars are as easy to find as falling off a log. Their names are Alnatak, Alnalam, and Mintaka. And they belong to a star pattern which is perhaps the most recognizable and easiest to find of all star patterns once you know where to look for it. Now, some of you out there, I'm sure, already know the constellation of stars to which Alnatak, Alnalam, and Mintaka belong. And even though it is one of the best known and beloved of all star patterns, nevertheless, the names of these three stars are not heard very often. Give up? Okay. These three stars are part of Orion, the mighty hunter, and make up his great starry belt. And to find Orion, and these three bell stars simply go outside any clear night in February between the hours of 8 and 10 p.m. your local time and look south. And there, smack dab right in front of you, you'll be able to see these three belt stars equally spaced in a row. The only three stars so precisely spaced apart in the entire heavens. Now, Orion's other stars are more famous and mentioned by name much more often. For instance, the two stars which mark his shoulders are named Betelgeuse and Bellatrix. And the two stars which make up his knees are called Sif and Rigel. Betelgeuse and Rigel are familiar to most science fiction fans, especially Rigel, which seems to turn up forever on reruns of Star Trek. But my personal favorite stars in Orion are his belt stars. Perhaps because they are so incredibly easy to identify. And because I just love the sound of their names. <laughs> and once more, in their proper order, is Alnatak to your left as you face Orion, Alnalam in the middle, and Mintaka on the right. Now, it seems that throughout history, these three stars have fascinated everyone who has ever bothered to look up at the night sky, perhaps because they are so obviously equally spaced, almost as if with some mysterious purpose. Many cultures have called them many names. For instance, Native Australians of long, long ago called them the Three Dancers, three young men dancing a wild Native Australian dance called the Corroboree, and incidentally, Ancient Australians also said that the music to which these young men danced was played by a group of young musician maidens, maidens nearby. The ladies we call in Western culture, the Pleiades, the Seven Sisters. Now in ancient Greenland, the belt stars were called the seal hunters, who after having become hopelessly lost at sea, were transported to the heavens by a friendly god. Ancient sailors, have also called these three stars the golden yard arm. Ancient church corers variously call these three stars the three magi, the three kings, and the three Marys. Also, Jacob's rod or staff, and even Our Lady's wand. And weirdly, for reasons unknown to anyone alive, some Laplanders still refer to these three stars as a tavern, a cosmic saloon. And even stranger, at least to my way of thinking, is the name the University of Leipzig gave these three stars in 1807 when it dubbed them Napoleon, which caused immediate indignation and retaliation 
by an offended Englishman who got back at the French by renaming them Lord Nelson. But these three stars by any name look the same, if you just keep looking up. Star Hustler, made possible by grants from the P.L. Dodge Foundation, the Miami Space Transit Planetarium and Museum of Science, and the Abraham Schwartz Memorial Fund. This concludes the broadcast day of WPSX-TV, Channel 3, Clearfield, Pennsylvania, a non-commercial educational television station. WPSX-TV is owned and operated by the Pennsylvania State University through the Division of Media and Learning Resources, under authority granted by the Federal Communications Commission. And WPSX-TV is a Ben Franklin Partnership Service of the Pennsylvania State University, working with businesses and industry for jobs and economic development. The studios and offices of WPSX-TV are located in Wagner Annex at the University Park campus of Penn State. The transmitter is located seven miles north of Clearfield on McGeorge Road and radiates 100,000 watts visual power and 20,000 watts oral power. Financial support for WPSX-TV comes in part from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the Pennsylvania Public Television Network Commission, the Pennsylvania Department of Education, the Allegheny Educational Broadcast Council, and corporate and viewer contributions. Channel 3 offers a variety of educational, informative, and entertaining programs from our own studios and from the Public Broadcasting Service, the Interregional Program Service, and the Pennsylvania Public Television Network. Channel 3's in-school service is presented in cooperation with the Allegheny Educational Broadcast Council. We invite your comments and suggestions about our programming. Complete listings are available in the WPSX-TV program guide, which is published monthly. We hope you'll tune in again tomorrow and enjoy WPSX-TV throughout the day.